Well, I'm Pei Hei, I'm at base in Shatnessing Gemara, it's 85B2. In uh, this Gemara, it's uh, six lines from the end of the page. In the Red Gemara, Pei Hei, I'm at base, 85B, six lines from the end of the page. Amalei Rava, uh, remember we're learning these various court cases and the various things happening. So the Gemara is turning to a different thing, but it's, it's similar. The Rebbe said to the son of Rabbi Chia Barabbin, he said to him, He said, Come, I'll tell you something nice that your father said. We learned by your father, he told something nice. And he says, Shmuel said, If I sell you a loan document, and then I forgive the debt. Machol, the debt is forgiven. So before it was like, <laughs> Shmuel, this, this is what Shmuel said, not what the guy's father said. Shmuel said, like, people used to, today, you buy loan documents, right? Mm-hmm. I uh, have a document, you owe me $1,000, so I'll sell it to him for nine fifty. because you have the hassle. You'll, you'll collect $1,000, and that's the way it works. So what happened with this? I sell you the loan. I mean, I have a document. I sell you the loan for nine fifty, and then I forgive the debt. Okay. Oh, you forgive the debt. I forgive the debt. <laughs> to him. After, you, <laughs> after I sold it to him. Slippery. Oh, exactly. Let's take the Gemara, what the Gemara says. It's a very famous din of Shmuel, by the way. The debt is forgiven. So he says, not only that, that's what... Your father, Shmuel said, your father said, Afilu Yerish Meichel. Okay? Even a kid who inherits the father can also forgive the debt. Now, if somebody owes somebody's father money, the kid can collect the debt also because he's the inheritor. Right? So not only can the father forgive the debt, but even the kids can, can forgive the debt after the father dies. So let, let's explain this a little bit, what, what the Gemara says. He explains it at the bottom like this. When a lender holds a note in debtness, he commands two rights over the borrower. Okay? Number one, your property is, there's a lien on your property to me. Correct? Secondly, there's a puzzle that says, Eved leiver le'ish malva. The borrower is a slave of the lender. When I lend you money, yeah, your body becomes indebted to me. Secondly, there's also a lien on the property. Okay? Now, um, when the lender sells a note, he doesn't sell his status as, no, you owe me $1,000, right? I sell you the loan document. The only thing I could sell you, to you, is the, the, se- the aspect that my money belongs to you. But not me. He borrowed, you borrowed money from me. So you're indebted to me. You're not indebted to me. It's just you can collect the money from him. But you're not indebted to me. Correct? The first, normally when I lend you money, there's two things. Your property is indebted to me. And you are indebted to me. Correct? Now, if I sell the loan document to somebody, all I'm selling is the monetary value of it. I can't say sell the fact that you're indebted to me. Your body is indebted to me. Therefore, okay, when the lender actually... Um, now, even when I sell you the document, he doesn't owe you money. You owe me the money. Except you can collect it. If I lend you a thousand dollars, yeah, and I sell the document to him, correct? You don't owe him money. You still owe me money. Because I was the one who lent it to you. If I lend you money, right, you are indebted to me. It's not transferable till it's paid. It's not transferable. No, that, the, that aspect of it, that I was the one that lent you money, and therefore, not only do you have to pay me back, but you are indebted to me, that only exists between me and you. So when you forgive him, how do I collect? That, that's why he says he can't. What? 
That's what Shmuel's din was. If I sell you the document, one second, one second, one second. If I sell you the document, yeah, and then I forgive it. Then I shall have recourse. One second, one second. The is going to go into that, by the way. We haven't heard the halacha yet. We just heard Shmuel's opinion. Yeah. No, this is, by the way, this is halacha. <laughs> but you cannot collect the debt from him anymore. The Gemara is going to discuss, can you come back to me yeah. and ask for a refund? But if you have only 950. Okay. No, the Gemara is going to discuss that. Okay? Well, but as far as. What about the interest I was here for? Yeah, right. Jewish, Jewish interest. What? If the letter was dead, died. Then the kid. That's, why the, that's what the Din Shmuel says. Even the Yiddish, even the, the inheritor, because the fact that he has a debt to me. So, God forbid, if I die and my kids are there, so you owe them the debt. They are instead of me. Right? The, tr- the heirs are instead of the, of, the, of the father. So this indebtedness goes to, over to the kids, but not to a guy you send the do- document to. I sell him the document, you can collect the money. But he doesn't owe me. Can I ask, before you sell it to me, that he signs it, he owes it to me? Tomorrow's going to say that soon. That guy's a jump in the gun. It's good, but you jump in the gun. I'll give you another practical case, which is not this, but it has to do with interest. You know, sometimes I will take out my, my line of credit to lend you money. Right? I give my credit card. People use... Not a, not a, I, I, I want, you asked me to lend you $5,000. Yeah? So I take out money on $5,000 on the credit card. Correct? Now, I'm paying interest to the credit card. Correct? Now, you say, okay, I'm going to pay the interest. That's what people do. Like, you're going to pay the interest. That's biblically forbidden. What about if you have... Exactly. Why is it biblically forbidden? Why is it biblically forbidden? Because reality is, the bank has nothing to do with you and me. I lend you $5,000, Right? You have to pay me back $5,000. You can't pay me back with interest, and that's what you're doing. The bank, is, the, the bank has nothing to do here. The bank knows one thing. They have to be paid their interest. But you're not paying the bank interest. You're paying me interest. And we are looking to forbid. I thought it's allowed with the documents. Had to risk them. Yeah. yeah, but that makes it into a business rather than a loan. But I'm just saying, take a simple scenario case. Yeah? I give you my, I borrow $5,000 on my credit card for you. Yeah? And then you're going to pay the interest. The fact is, you're not paying the bank interest. Even though you're writing out the check to the bank, you're paying me interest. Because the bank has nothing to do with you. I am responsible for the money. Right? You have nothing to do with the bank. You have to do with me. So when you pay the interest, you're paying me the interest. If I pay you with the interest and you give that to the bank, it still is not good? No. It's mamish interest. So the same thing over here. I mean, it's not interest. It's a, a debt. I, you owe me $1,000. I sell the loan to him for nine fifty. dollars Shmuel says, and I go ahead and forgive the debt. The then is you cannot collect money from me. Not only that, even if my Yiddish, the kids and uh, uh, give up the debt yeah the merch of the debt is gone so he says but made the shmuel this is what your father said though. the shmuel agrees <laughs> a woman comes into a marriage with a loan document somebody owes the woman money somebody owes the woman money yeah Got it? Somebody owes the woman the money before she got married. Now, what happens? She comes into the marriage. So remember we learned Nixi Malug, the property she brings into the husband. The husband keeps the principal. I'm sorry, she keeps the principal. The husband gets the property. Like if she brings in a field into the marriage, right? She keeps the principal, but any profit that the field produces belongs to the husband. Okay? Now, what's the case? Somebody owed the woman, before she got married, $1,000. 
Now she brings that loan into the marriage. So that's called Nixi Meluk, meaning she keeps the principal and the profits the guy keeps. Well, profits is that? But yeah, you can't have profits at all. But what it means though is, what it means though is, he's part of the equation. So the woman just can't forgive the debt. Because there's a husband now that has a share, halachically, in that debt. And she can't forgive it for him. Right? That's very logical. So that's what he said. Shmuel said, you sell this, that, that you may hold, it's forgiven. And he says, even the kid can, inherit, can forgive it. But then your father added, A woman who brought in a loan document to her husband. And then the woman forgives the debt to the guy that owed her the money. Then she cannot forgive the debt. Why? Her husband is equal just like she is. And therefore they... And me, and I've given cash of 950 and I'm not in the same classification? The Gemara told you, the Gemara is going to talk about that soon. Um... You Not have to yet. pay it back. <laughs> huh? Not yet. No, you do have to. The bottom line is you do have to pay it back. Worse. Yeah. You can't just uh, sell me something and then I'm stuck with nothing. If I sell you a field that there was a lien on the field from somebody else, because yeah. I owed somebody money before I sold you the property, right? Okay. Now the guy comes to you and takes away the field. Right. What happens? You, you come back to me. You come back to me to collect the debt. But in other words, you can't come along and say, no, he belongs to you now, not to me. No, I can't, I can't go try and collect You can't him. collect from him. I no. can come back to you. I'll tell you, yeah. But the difference is, what happens if he has a lot of money to collect from, and I don't? What happens if I have a couple big guys? <laughs> I, th- I think you're right. What? I mean, yeah. <laughs> He bought it in order to collect the money and then you're forgiving. That's not your position. You already sold it. It's oh, not he yours said anymore. The, the fact that I lent you the money is a bond between me and I you know, that you can once, once he forgives it, then he's making an obligation where I have the, the ability to go back to him. Right. Otherwise, he's doing an illegitimate business. If he knew this, he wouldn't do that. <laughs> I mean, like, like he's mis- misleading, he's like deceiving you. Because between me and you, why should he forgive the debt? He's going to get more if he collects the debt than for what he's going to give him. What? If, I get, if you owe me $1,000, yes. yeah, what am I going to collect from you? $1,000, yeah? Now I, co- I forgive the debt, okay. right? Because you have 950. Because, but I, I, get, I, I get got 950. But I have to give it back to him. Yeah. So what am I left with? Negative Nothing. 50. <laughs> I could have gotten a thousand. So why would I want to be Michael the Chayv? Why would a guy want to forgive the debt? He's not going to gain anything by it. Because he's going to have to give back the guy the money that he spent and buy the document. Right? So all you're going to lose is money. Why would a guy do it? Why you do it? Why did he do it? People do a lot of stupid things. He money right away. <laughs> No, that, by the way, I was just going to say that. That's true. Because you might have to debt for a year. And I'm selling it to him for nine fifty and getting nine fifty now. That's worth Remember, you also, yeah, listen, people borrow money like that, it's right? Also a tax write off. Well, this, the Gemara doesn't talk about tax write offs. <laughs> Wait a second. But the same thing, remember, we learned about Aksuba, and this was the next piece of Gemara. A woman. If the husband dies and divorces her, she collects the ksuba. But what happens if the woman needs cash right away? So many times a woman will sell a gambler, right? She'll sell the ksuba for 150. The guy buying it, so she gets 150 cash now. The guy, you're taking the risk because if the wife dies first, it's nothing. you're going to get nothing. Is that considered interest? Can no. You get more? No, no, no. It's not. It's not a. Lo- it's not because he didn't lend you the money. He, he, he didn't give you the ksuba. You're buying somebody else's document. L- interest is from lender to borrower. 
It's not. All right, because no interest is being paid, only the original Correct. Amount. It's just a discounted sale because of the yeah, time yeah. delay of money. It's not a gambling, it's taking a risk. Gambling is also, yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the difference between gambling and taking a risk is uh, it's not too much different the truth is every time you go into a car you're taking a risk but you're gambling also <laughs> yeah but it's only also then we learned in Sanhedrin that's only if it's your occupation stock market is not gambling 100%, 100% gambling and it's okay I didn't well, say that. Company, you know it's going that's, up. I didn't that's, say that. That's a more calculated risk. Not necessarily. So it's gambling. It's still gambling. Okay. Trivisa. Let's go. Trivisa, the Rav Nachman, a relative of Rav Nachman. Okay. Whatever it was. A relative of Rav Nachman. Zavinta Luxuba sold Luxuba Beteva Sano. She sold it for a small amount. Okay. In other words, the buyer assumes the right of the ksuba. Meanwhile, she gets cash, but it's a gamble because maybe the wife will die first and she'll get nothing. What happens? Igar Shah, the guy divorced her, and then Shkiva, then she died, leaving over a daughter. Okay? Now, the purchaser came and said, the daughter has to pay me the ksuba now. The guy divorced her, she has to pay her ksuba. Correct? Correct. The husband has to pay her ksuba. She died. I mean, he died. And he divorced her. Then she died, so now she has an heir, her kid, to collect. So they come to him, the purchaser of the ksuba came, and said, you owe us the, the thing. Okay? Now, um... So what happens? Amal Rav Nachman. So Rav Nachman. So now the problem is like this: this girl is going to collect the ksuba for her mother, and this guy's going to take it away from her. Who guy's going to take it? The guy that she sold it to. The guy that bought the ksuba. The guy that bought the rights to the ksuba, right? The daughter has to collect the ksuba from the from the from her father or whatever it was, right? And then. The guy is going to come and take away all the ksuba. It's not paying. So Rav Nachman says, nobody can get an Eitzah and advice for the girl to help out this girl, an orphan. And she was related to Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman said, come on guys, we can't even figure something out to help this poor girl out. Okay? So what happened? Tazel, she went, let her go. You know, Rav Nachman did it in a roundabout way. He said, nobody can help her do something. And Rav Nachman gave her advice what to do. Let her go forgive the ksuba. A mother has a right, a wife has a right to forgive the ksuba, right? She can say, I don't, don't pay me. Guy divorces his wife, she has a right to say, don't, you don't have to pay me. Okay. Now, but the mother died. Let the girl forgive the ksuba. Right. <laughs> then, the mine, and then, because the ksuba is not collectible. He does not write this. No, but that means the father, her father is not paying the, the ksuba. Right. That means the Correct? The buyer doesn't write That means eventually the father will die and she'll collect that money that the father is not paying for the ksuba. She's blocking it. Huh? She's blocking it now. <laughs> what happens is like this. Yeah. If the girl forgives the ksuba, that means her father doesn't have to pay the buyer the ksuba. Father? The husband of her mother was her father. Right? Okay. A, girl, a woman was married the ksuba's from the husband. to the wife. Yeah. Okay, but she died, so she has a kid that inherits the, the ksuba. The ksuba. Instead of the mother getting the ksuba, the daughter gets the daughter's the gonna get the First, the husband divorced the wife, so he has an obligation now to pay the ketubah. Right. Okay, and then the mother died before she collected. Right. So now the heir really collects the ksuba. The but, problem is if she goes to her father to collect the ksuba, and she gets the ksuba, the purchaser of the ksuba is going to take it away from her. I 
keep getting confused when you say the father. I thought the husband pays the suit. Yeah, to, the, to her mother, but her mother died. So who's getting her ksuba? Yeah, child, the father. The father has to pay the mother the ksuba. Correct? But he died. I mean, she died, so who's going to get it? That's her wife had a child, the daughter. Her daughter is going to get it. The wife dies, the daughter gets it. That's now, so Rav Nachman said to the girl, listen. It's the ex-husband. Forgive the ksuba. Forgive the ksuba. Therefore, the purchaser won't be able to get it. Got it? And then, eventually, your father will die. You'll get the money. Not right away. Maybe you can kill him, but <laughs> when he dies, you'll get the money. So what happened? Shama. So what happened was like this. Rav Nachman spoke, so to speak, out loud. If that was, nobody can find an Eitzah for this. He didn't tell it to the girl directly. That wouldn't be proper. Because this is a relative. So he said it like out loud. Well, why can't somebody find an Eitzah for the girl that she should forgive the Ksuba and then eventually she'll get it. So the girl heard it. Okay. And, and she forgave the Ksuba. So then Rav Nachman regretted what he did. One second. He said, We made ourselves like lawyers. He says, You know what? It's wrong for me to act as a lawyer for my relative. But he, he, she didn't do bad things. She just did it. He didn't say her to do it. She just, he just mentioned it out. She heard it. You got to do it anyway. Yeah, but they did it in court. No, not bad things. But no. she just, he, just, he just verbalized out loud an idea. I but understand, but he wanted that the daughter should find out about it and do it. So he had a problem. He said, so the man says, one minute. If that's the case, what was the difference between when he told the advice and then when he changed his mind? So why did he give her the advice to begin with? He gave her advice, and then he said, oh, I shouldn't have done it. Yeah? So why did he do it to begin with, and why, didn't change, why did he change his mind afterwards? So the man said, me call him myself. The man asks, what did he think initially, and what did he think at the end? So he says like this, Me call the Sava initially, Rav Nachman thought the din is, Me psachalei to Salam. The Gemara says, You should not hide yourself from your kin, from your relatives. So Rav Nachman, that's a Pasuk, by the way. Me psachal to Salam. That's one of the sources that the Gemara says, An uncle should marry a niece. Because don't, Me psachal from your own kin, don't hide. So Rav Nachman thought like this. Initially, Rav Nachman said, I got to help her out, she's a relative. And he said, what was wrong with it, Adam Choshib Shani, okay, because he was a prominent man, Rav Nachman was very pro- a very prominent man in Bezdin, he was very, one of the greatest Amidoim. He said, if I do it, if I did this, people are going to learn and do it also, and it's not right. Why not? And if they go to Bezdin, I understand, but if... Because it's get... not the right thing to do. Why not? Because you're messing up those guys. Why are you messing up? You're giving, uh, that's... I mean, if they go to Bedin and you are a judge and you say that... Yeah, Let me ask you a question. Did the mother sell the ksuba? Yes. Okay, then the guy should get it. That's true. Come on, let's be fair. It's mental yeah. prices. How you... Know. Business. Business. So initially he said, you know, she's my relative. I got to think only about her. Then he said, you know what? It's not right because people are going to learn from me. It's because of the conflict of interest because uh, right. she, he's acting as a dying Right. Right. We assume that's what everybody decided. So, what did you do? Oh, yeah. So, if the other guy had uh, someone like Rav Nachman, and then Rav Nachman gave advice to her, he said, okay, because then two is okay, yeah? To help her to balance yeah. it. Right. But just by itself, it's not good. Repeat that. They had lawyers in those days? Yeah. Huh? They had lawyers in those days? <laughs> It says in Mishra, you shouldn't make yourself like Archa Yeah, but they must have lawyers in those days. Satan. You sure they did? Okay, so now the Gemara says, go for like this. Arma Shmuel, the Gemara is going through the Gemara that Shmuel just said and elaborating on the Gemara. Arma Shmuel, Shmuel said, If a guy sells the document to his friend, those are the things Shmuel said before. I sell you a document to somebody else, 
and then I forgive the document, the debt is forgiven. Yeah, so now the world is going to say, so how does this guy get his money back? The purchaser. So the Gemara gives him advice, what to do. If the purchaser of the debt is smart, in other words, if he foresees a guy might forgive the debt and then he's stuck, what should he do? He should go like this. He should offer the borrower some money. I'll explain this before the seller forgives the loan. Because of the start of and write a new dead document in his own name. Okay, now, okay, this is, this is not hard, but it's just. Why did Shmuel say that if I sell the document, I can forgive it? Remember we said, because there's two aspects over here. There's the monetary collection, and then there's the body. I lent you the money, I'm bound to you. I mean, you're bound to me, I'm sorry. I lent you the money, you're bound to me. That you can't forgive, correct? Therefore, the debt is forgiven. I can forgive the, uh, the monetary right, but I can't forgive the, the bound, right? Therefore, why can't the purchaser, or, or yeah, the one that bought the debt, why can't he collect the debt? Because the only connection he has to the debtor is the financial thing. There's no personal body in that indebted indebted man, whatever the word is, no such word. So he says like this, you have to create, a vulnerability of Yeshua says very simple, the guy that purchases the loan should lend the borrower a dollar, write a document on it, now there's a debt, a body debt from the borrower to the new guy, to the guy that purchased the document. Who's the borrower? I lend him $1,000, right? He's the borrower. Well, where's the document? No, it's not so we're talking about the loan note. We're not doing that? So it's done. Oh, what are we doing? They're doing, Shmuel says so that. This is before you walked in, so it's... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, you owe me $1,000, right? I sell the document to you for 950 and then I forgive the debt, so the guy says he can't collect the debt. The guy who sold the document to cannot collect the debt. Why? Because all, you, all he could do, you have nothing to do with him, right? All you have to do with him is money. So the money I forgave, right? So, but if the guy that bought the document like you goes over to him, before I forgive the debt. Lend him $10 and write a document on the $10 loan. Yeah? yeah? Now, you are bodily indebted to him okay. for the new loan. But not the previous one. Good, one second. For the new loan, he's indebted, right? So therefore, he could collect the document, yes, not from properties he owned before, but from properties from now on. You're right. So only the ten dollars he can collect, not that. No, but now there's a whole bond, a body to body. So now this extra money he can collect from you. Even after you forgave. Right. It, no, if he had the debt before he forgave it. Uh huh. If you if you make that connection. If he wrote this, the. What is the logic? Because you you're making a. It's body nothing death. spiritual, it's nothing. No. Spiritual. What is this? It's like it's logical. Evid Lover The Pasik says in Tillam, a borrower is indebted to the lender. There's only a financial debt. There's something stronger, there's a physical yeah. bond. You owe me money. It's not only the money, you owe me money. Something mentally or whatever. When I sell the document, 
Yeah, it's only money. money. There's no you. Okay, so the Gemara says if the guy wants to protect himself, he should make a new debt with the borrower for a small amount of money. Make a document, right, and then it would be a body debt because you owe him ten dollars. Yeah, but I understand. I I owe him. But how is it the nine fifth? What if the nine fifty comes? Because the fact that now you are indebted to him, it's not only for this debt. You are indebted to him. So any indebt indebtment were there you're three, able to collect. I, I think I misunderstand something. Were there three people involved in this transaction? Yeah. How how did this work again? You had the lender. You've heard of people that bar, sell mortgages? Huh? You hear a third market for mortgages? Buy, like you buying, buying, notes, buying, right. buying notes. Buying notes. That's so exactly what happened. The lender gave a loan to the borrower. What did the third guy do? He bought the note. Uh, he bought the note from me. The, who are you? The, the borrower. borrower. Well, he bought the, so in other words, the, the lender lent person B. I lend him $1,000. Okay. And the third guy? I sold him. I'm, and the loan is due in two years. Right. Oh, I see. I want cash now. So I sell him, this guy, the okay. debt for nine fifty. The debt for nine fifty. Gotcha. Okay. So he gets uh, get the debt. So normally he can go to him and collect the debt, and he makes fifty bucks in the deal. Gotcha. I understand. Okay. But what happens if I forgive the debt? Uh, Forgetting that he after you sold, sold it, you can forgive the debt. Yeah. Yeah, of course. That's what Shmuel said. I can forgive the debt. Correct. So in other words, that guy's stuck. That he's stuck. He's stuck. So, so the, and Mark, we explain yeah. why. I, the guy owes him the money. Right. He doesn't owe him the money. Right. He owes me the money. Right. He has my right to collect it. Right? right? right. But, but he doesn't owe him the money. Right. He owes me the money. You can't get it from him. Right. But if he has the feeling that something's going to happen over here, right. before I forgive the debt, right. he lends him a dollar. He lends him a dollar. Yeah. And even better yet would be to write a document. Okay. Now, is there a lender borrower connection? Yes. Okay, so now that there's a this bond between the two of them for one dollar. For one dollar, he could collect the nine fifty from him. From him. Mm -hmm. The thousand. Oh, that, you're right. The thousand. The thousand. Yeah, thousand. Right. The thousand. So you can do it. But the guy could say, but I only owe you a dollar. The guy forgave me the thousand. But he has the he has the note. He has the note. That's how it works. Okay. Why, why, I'll take your word for it. Why don't we say here is also Shemuel is like Korfei Dayanin. He's giving you advice to do this. Oh, if you want to, you can do this. He's not talking to everybody in particular. Oh, Dayanin, you come to me in the court case and I give you advice. He's saying a halacha. For everybody. He's saying a halacha in Torah. If I sell you the chayv and then I forgive it, it's forgiven. And even the yard is to do it. Now, the Gemara says like this. He left. He asked the question and he left. <laughs> can, I get, can this guy get reimbursed for me? I sell him 950. Yeah. Right? I forgive the debt. I forgive the debt. He's not going to pay him a cent. Right. Can, can he to come you? back to me and get 950? No, he should, you. He yeah. should be able to. When I thought suing, there's no t suing in Taylor. Okay, fine. Do I, does, do I have to pay him the money or not? Yeah. No. You sold something, though? Let me ask you a question. Oh, I guess. Let me ask you a very... And I'm saying it now because this is what the Gemara is going to elaborate on. Did I directly damage him or indirectly? Indirectly. Did I take it... Uh, is, let me ask you a question even more. Do you know if I have a loan document that you owe me $1,000? Yeah? And this rascal over here, pardon the expression, burns the document. Troublemaker. Okay. He burns the document. Now, I'm not going to be able to collect $1,000 because I have no proof. Obviously, if you're going to be a nice guy and say, yeah, I owe you the money, but otherwise, I have no proof anymore. Right. So now I'm out 1000 bucks. He damaged me 1000 bucks. Right. Yes? Right. Was that direct damages or indirect That's damages? Direct. Why is it direct? No, indirect. If I burn down your house, it's, it's direct damages. 
What did I do? I all I still might pay and you not pay. All I did, all I did was indirectly now you can't pay the debt. He can't collect the debt. But it's indirectly. Yeah, he didn't burn the money. Okay, so now the Gemara is going to go into the concept that's called Garmi and Groma. There is an Allah indirect damages, your potter. You don't have to pay. Between you and God is a whole different story. I'll give you an example. Uh, the mission of Kainis, um, you have a barn. Yeah? I open your barn door. You have a barn with animals in it. I open your barn door. And the animals run out. And got killed or lost. I'm not talking secular, no. no I'm talking about terrible. Did I directly damage you or indirectly damage you? Indirectly. Didn't we learn that somebody's throwing down uh, dishes from the roof and you pull out the pillow underneath it? Same thing. It's the same thing. Indirect damages. What about the axe that flies off the handle and kills a guy? That's indirect. Yeah, but if you kill him, the Torah says indirect. You have to go to city refuge. So even though he's indirect, he still has to go. Okay, gotcha. Listen, (laughs) killing and money is two different things. One guy has to sit in the... Uh, okay, <laughs> so now, so let's analyze it like this. If it's indirect damages, what I did to him, because I, all I did was forgive the debt. I didn't take his property and burn it. I just made it he doesn't have the ability to connect to collect the money anymore. If that's the case, if it's grandma, then he can't come to me for the money. Right? Because I didn't damage him. You couldn't prove him better than that I... I mean, it's indirect damages. Right? If you say Gami, we're going to soon discuss what Grama and Gami. If you hold Gami as Chayv, like the mayor, this case would be called Garmi. It's a more direct indirect. It's a more direct indirect. And then, according to the mayor, you, the mayor says, you Chayv and Garmi. And then I would have to pay him the money. Like in which example? When I sold him the document for nine fifteen, then I forgave the debt. Oh. So you, so he says that you can collect it. Right. It depends. It is Garmi or not Garmi, yeah. Yeah. If you old Garmi is high, then you have to pay Garmi, and if not, all I have to pay him is the amount of the paper. But everybody say this is not Garmi. No, that's mercy. I'm not a Okay. Man the doing dinner the gami, the one that judges the dinner of gami, meaning you'll obligate this the guy to do it. So then Magbalaj may start him He's gonna get it's it's like he it's a document that he ruined and he has to pay the entire face value of the debt, meaning he has to pay him a thousand bucks. Not nine fifty. Because I direct, if Gami is indirect, direct. And now because of me, he can't collect the debt of $1,000. I would have to give him $1,000. That's according to a different opinion. One right? second. The opinion doesn't hold of Gami. Okay? Then, all you can get is the value of the paper. Meaning he doesn't have to pay anything. Because the guy says to him, I sold you a piece of paper. Pretty expensive piece of paper, but you still have it. And then I said, what do you mean? Who is holding what? That, uh, is that uh, it's holding the loan document. No, no. The, that in the, is, we're talking about this case is direct or indirect, or if someone is holding that uh, in case of indirect, you don't have to pay? That's the argument about What is the argument? If Garmi is high of a potter. Garmi. Garmi. Everybody says Groma indirect is potter. Yeah, okay. That's... Between you and God, okay. you have something to straighten out over there. You want to be you know, good in heaven, you should pay the money. Okay. But the courts can't obligate you. Okay. Garmi is more, it's indirect, but it's more direct. For instance, he says the general approach, however, is if it, the damage results directly, immediately through one's action, then it's Garmi. 
when it results indirectly or delayed, then it's good amma. It's like opening the bar door and it's good amma. Right. No, that would be good amma because it didn't happen right away. The animals could have gone out hours later. When I forgave the debt, it was immediate. I immediately made him lose the money. So therefore, you have to. So, so even though I didn't burn his plate, bro. That's good amma. So yeah, you so if you hold a kramer that got me as chayev, then I, if you hold a kramer that got me as chayev, then I would have to pay him the money. If you don't hold a kramer and there's no thing as got me, grama is always potter, then I don't have to pay. Why would this be got me instead of regular grama? Because it happened immediately, not eventual. You made a decision. Right. So the Allah is Garmi is Chayef, by the way. So therefore, in this case, we would have to pay him the money. As I told him before, you would have to get the money back anyway. I'll listen to the WhatsApp. You know. It's from? I'm using the word Garmi and Garmi. Drama is Mamish indirect. Garmi is indirect, but it has immediate results. Garmi? Yeah. Well, it's taste that speaks in Bafra. Garmi is Bore Hezeka. Bore Hezeka means it's fishing an app. Listen, when I opened the door of the barn, yeah, who said the animals are going to go out? Right? I have an IOU note and I burn it. Somebody burns it. How do you know he's not going to pay back? It's not a definite, immediate damage. But when, the second I'm forgiving the chayv, he can't get it. That's immediate. So it's indirect. I'm not taking a thousand dollars of his and burning it. But it's immediately happening. As soon as I forgive the debt, he can't collect it. This for you in yeah. oral? Or they have to like oral, it? no. Yeah. Both are indirect, but one indirect is closer to direct. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, we're going to leave it here. No stress.